It's chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day, except for, I think it's 3% of the population. Anyway, uh, we have a GH04W10A2GC. It's a laser diode. So we've talked about lots of different diodes here in the on the channel. I don't know if we've talked about laser diodes specifically, maybe. Um, anyway, this is a special laser diode. It is from the Sharp Corporation. They're one of the first ones to make laser diodes. Uh, Sharp made them and Sony made them and some other. I remember back in their back in the early 80s, they were $500 each for a red, a red laser diode. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's take a look here. Um, all laser diodes look the same. Well, that's not really true. Uh, Vixels look different, but um, most laser diodes look like this. They're in a can. They're like in a kind of a TL5 can, with just with two legs. And then this is a little window so the light can come out. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it here. Um, says here the uh, laser diode the laser diode chip is indium, uh, ga indium aluminum gallium nitride. Okay, common. So the stem is uh, uh, iron and copper, gold plated. Uh, the cap is kovar, nickel plated. The window glass is borosilicated glass. Yes, sir. Um, Let's see here. Okay, what can we learn about laser diodes? We've looked at a lot of data sheets. I don't think we looked at an optical data sheet or something like this. Um, it has an uh, optical power output. In CW, you can get 350 milliwatts of power out of this thing. And in pulse mode, you can get 1.1 watts of optical power. Um, reverse voltage is 2 volts. So, yeah, don't put reverse voltage on these things. They blow up. They don't like it. Uh, good to have a protection diode in there. Uh, operating temperature is a standard. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, threshold current. That's the lasing threshold current. You need to get above a certain current level and then the diode will start to laze. Before that, it's kind of like an LED. So somewhere around 140 milliamps, it'll start to laze. We can check that out. Uh, operating current of 325 milliamps max. Uh, 4.5 volt operation. Do, 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 do. And then here's some cool optical fiddly bits. The, the 1 over E squared intensity angle in parallel uh, is uh, 14 degrees. And the perpendicular. So these things uh, are oval. The, the beam comes out oval. And that's because of diffraction on a thin slit and everything. Anyway, uh, they're oval. Where they have astigmatism. Yeah, it's, so the oval shape is 14 degrees in the narrow direction and 41 degrees in the wide. So it'll be a narrow, it'll be a flat wide beam, be an, an oval beam. And we can take a look at that misalignment, the accuracy, slope. Anyway, all kinds of cool stuff in here for our laser folks and optical folks. I say we turn it on first. Let's turn it on and then we can take a look at some other things. Okay. Okay, I have it down here. It's, it's an assembly. I'll show you that a little bit later. I just wanted to operate it first. So the laser diode is mounted on a heat sink and uh, there's actually a collimating lens as part of it. And so um, we can try to get a beam out of it. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up to the curve tracer, of course. So let's go to the curve tracer and see if it acts like a diode. We'll turn up the voltage here. And uh, let's see, we need to select the right one. Turn up, there it is. It's, it's, acting like, it's acting like a diode, right? And so we are at 50 milliamps per division. So 50, uh, 100, 150, right? You get the idea here. All right. And so we're going to go up here to, uh, let's see, this would be uh, 100, 200, 300. 400 milliamps. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom out a bit here so you can see what I see. All right. So, uh, I'm going to hold a piece of paper 
right about here. And I think that will be, I think that will be okay. Let's try this out. Uh, it's not, yeah, it's not, okay, let's see here. How can I, and film everything. I think you can see that. Oh yeah, now you can see it. Okay, so we come up here and uh, at the bottom, I think you can see that slight bluish uh, tint there. So it's acting like an LED and then right about here, it's starting to laze. You can see right there, it's it's changing. Okay, it's going from kind of a bleh to a sharp, a sharp point, okay? And that's happening right about here, which is right around 130, about 130 milliamps on the, on the curve razor. So we're right, right on spec, okay? And then we can come up here. Now this isn't great to look at, if, <laughs> so um, of course it's, great, oh, it's fine on camera, but I'm gonna kind of shield my eyes from it. It is 405 nanometers, okay? 405 nanometers, 405. And so it is in the visible range. The human visual system goes down to about 380, um, but below 380, it would be considered near, infra, uh, near ultraviolet. Um, some people would say 405 is near ultraviolet. It's really visible, but we'll call it near ultraviolet. 400 nanometers. Um, it is near ultraviolet, not ultraviolet, near ultraviolet. Okay, fine. Anyway, I think you can see that it's an oval shape. Hopefully that shows up on camera. Let's see if I can look at the beam a little bit better with the camera. All right, I've kind of zoomed down here a bit so we can... We can watch the beam form, and there it's lasing, and then we get kind of that, we get kind of that uh, oval, oval beam, 405. All right. So I was at the flea market, and this is actually what I purchased. I actually bought four of these, and uh, they are a laser diode module. Okay, so the laser diode is down here. It's on a copper heat spreader um, and there's a little lens glued on. So it has a collimating lens. All right. It has some drive electronics on the back that allow you to drive the LED and modulate it. And then goes through a optical window here. And then it comes along here to this weird assembly in front, which is a prism. Okay. And it is just a piece of glass. Okay. Let me take it out of its little metal, uh, its little metal frame here. So it's just a little chunk of glass, expensive chunk of glass, because it's very, very accurate and it's coated and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm totally destroying it now by handling it with my hands, but that's okay. I don't really care. So this nice little piece of glass, and so if you shine a laser beam through this piece of glass, uh, it will do nothing. But if you tilt it, it will go in. It'll go up and over and then it'll continue parallel to the first, but displaced a bit. So this allows some type of displacement. And in this particular uh, module, there's a stepper motor, a uh, little stepper motor down here, a four, four, four wire stepper motor and some gears and stuff. And it, it will turn that uh, little, um, that little motor and turn the prism the motor has no electronics associated with it. The, uh, the four windings in the motor come out, come out on this little connector and they just get passed through this, this connector, which goes out to whatever equipment this was in. So the drive electronics for the motor was someplace else. Just the four wires went through. Um, there are a couple uh, big heavy transistors here to drive the LED. Um, and uh, so I've taken I've just once this one's complete. I've taken this one apart and that's the one that we looked at on the curve tracer. Uh, you can see the lens there. It looks a little bit interesting. It's got some optical coating on it that looks kind of yellowish brown. Um, here's that little stepper motor and the gear assembly. And uh, here's the backside of the, uh, the laser diode. So the laser diode is just that tiny little thing here. It's pressed into this big copper heat sink, but the LED, uh, the uh, laser diode is a tiny little like TO18 type can. Uh, it's fairly small with a window. All right. 
Um, yeah. So the uh, beam I said was uh, 14 degrees by 41 degrees. 41 degrees would be splaying way out. Well, that's what the lens does, though. So what we were seeing is a narrowed version of it. This lens does try to narrow it but it's still going to contain some of that ovalness. So that's what we saw there. But if we remove this lens, we would have kind of a line almost to be 40, 40 degrees in extent and kind of a line, but uh, it has the collimating lens on it. Um, so uh, I removed the uh, drive electronic board. We can take, take a look at a picture here of the, of the two sides of it. Um, it looks interesting. It's got some pretty heavy-duty transistors in it, and um, it's got uh, some little ones, little SOT 23s, and then on the back side of the board, it looks like it has an op amp, which you would think would be necessary to do some type of feedback to keep a constant current and things like that. I started to reverse engineer the, um, the circuit myself, and then I received an email from the guy I bought them from, and he gave me a GitHub site where he had all of his uh, documents. So let's look at some of the documents that he sent me, the data sheet being one of them. Uh, let's see. He gave me two. Yeah, this is a better version of the schematic. So he gave me, uh, he had reverse engineered it, I guess. So this is the schematic. Um, so it's not drawn very well, but basically the uh, laser diode is right here. There's a protection diode across the laser diode. Remember I said don't go above the 2-volt reverse. You should put a protection diode. Well, that's, that's this guy. There's two of those big, big heavy transistors are here. They're actually in parallel, and uh, they have a 1-ohm resistor in the emitter for current spreading of these two guys. So anyway, they're both in parallel and um, uh, this one is being driven from the op, op amp and this one's being driven from where? This one's being driven from the plus VCC is going here. This wants to go low, so that turns on this guy. And looks like it's just, huh. Mm. Oh, I see, so this is sort of a feedback path. The feedback path goes into this, into this trans impedance amplifier here. Um, and so what are we going to do here? We're going to bring in a signal from the outside, uh, which will modulate the uh, intensity of the thing by uh, feeding in a voltage here. Uh, that voltage is put directly onto this transistor, and then there's some type of feedback onto this transistor. I guess that uh, allows you to modulate it at some, at some depth. Um, Anyway, that's what's on the thing. The uh, it says here 8.65 volts is the the VCC that comes in, and that goes through an LC to filter it. Uh, there's another VCC that comes in that just runs the uh, op amp single-endedly. Uh, so anyway, interesting little interesting little device. Um, 405 nanometer LEDs are used in resin printers um, and uh, certainly uh, they could be used to cure IR set glues and things like that and uh, might be fun to set up some um, green solder mask and then just write like a pen write MSI guy or something to see if it cures it. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, anyway, made by the Alps Corporation. Yeah, that was chip of the day. Chip of the day was a uh, sharp uh, laser diode GH04W10A2GC.